it's designed because what they do is they merge two things. They merge method and motive. So say your motive is to eliminate racism and they say, we're going to use this method. Well, if the method is bad, that doesn't mean your motive is bad, but it means you need to junk this. You know, when the horse is dead, remember to dismount. Okay. But they don't. What they do is they merge motive and method together. So you can't oppose the method without being accused of opposing the motive. And, uh, and you have to think about that. They say we're opposing racism. Remember what I said about Martin Luther King's approach. You have to love the other side and win them over by your not just conduct, but by reasoned argument. What they are trying to do is to destroy the other person as an example to make everybody else not speak up and not oppose their methods by merging method and motive. If you oppose the method, then you're opposed to the motive. And if you do, here's what we're going to do to you in the name of being tolerant. So you have to catch this. So if I'm trying to convince you, say I think you're a big racist bigot, if I get up in your face and yell, you're a bigot, and yell at you and fire you from your job, are you convinced anymore that I'm right? No. As a matter of fact, the odds are you're pretty hardened into your position now. And you're thinking, why you blank, 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 I'm going to get you at the earliest opportunity. See, so this has nothing to do, believe me, the, the idea of race and the other things that are being used are simply a vehicle, a crisis, real, imagined, contrived, that they use for a deeper political goal, and that is the destruction of the society and its transformation. You'll hear those words all the time, transformation of the society and the rejection of it. Don't be fooled by that, but a lot of people are, let's face it. I mean, what if I'm a gay man and I don't want to be gay? In other words, I, I reject this you've now restricted my freedom and my rights to do what? To solve the d deal of one little group, say. We're using little groups to hold entire civilizations captive to that. It has to be uniform. It has to be a level playing field. And you're right, if you notice, um, and I'm sure you're having similar issues with Native Australians, we have Native Americans, African Americans, Native Canadians, um, everything's being flipped uh, in that what it works out is that certain groups get rights, other groups don't get those rights. It's very convoluted thinking. God tells us you can't do that. Woe unto those who call evil good, good evil, and light dark, and dark light. Don't flip this over by this redefinition that you're going through. And God understood. That's why he said woe, and it's several times in the scripture. Woe unto people who do this because God understood that it under, undermines the entirety of the morality of a society. Uh, and we're seeing that. And so we hear that only whites can be racist, certain minorities can never be racist. Our problem is whiteness. If you ask them for a definition, I've never gotten a clear definition of what whiteness is, because we're actually told that blacks who dissent have too much whiteness. And I'm thinking, well, this is interesting. Um, and fortunately, there are a lot of blacks who were saying the same thing. You know, they're thinking, okay, they're thinking about this doesn't make any sense. Uh, when I, I had a, a, a pastor on my show who was advocating this, and I said, well, what is whiteness? Is it Western civilization? And he said, well, no, it's not Western civilization. I said, well, is it the color of my skin? If I'm white, I have whiteness. He says, no, you can be black and have too much whiteness too. And I said, well, what is it? And he thought for a second. He, well, I don't know, but don't you get it? I mean, that I, I, I never forgot that. Don't you get it? Well, it's, no, I keep asking you to tell me what it is.